Hello, I'm Mario, and greetings from Chissos Basin. I'm here at Big Bend National Park. And in this video, what I would like to do is, well, go over some of the features that this park has to offer, and also share with you my experiences at the park. I've been camping here for, well, over a week now, and so I'd also like to share with you what it's like RVing here in Chisos Basin. There are other campgrounds available here at Big Bend National Park, and, well, there are a lot of other campgrounds available and campsites, but there are other campgrounds that can accommodate RVs. So if you're out RVing in a travel trailer or you have a small motorhome, then you might look at Chissos Basin Campground. Now this campground has no water, no electricity, so it's dry camping, the sites are uneven. Um, so, and also I'm at 5,200 feet here in the basin so the elevation is up here. Uh, I haven't had issues with my propane, but uh, at any rate, um, it's an adventure just getting to the campsite. Uh, not crazy, but you have to pay attention and plan. And so towards the end of the video, I would like to go more into details about my specific campsite and how I have things uh, set up here, how I managed to level out and that sort of thing. But I do wanna share with you some of the sites to see in the immediate area here. So for instance, uh, there is a visitor center. There is a lodge. So maybe you don't have an RV, you can still camp here with a tent or you can stay at the lodge up at the top of the hill here. There are several trailheads to go check things out. And um, oh yeah, uh, there's a restaurant and also a little store. So there is some really exciting uh, stuff just right here in Chisos Basin. When I first pulled into my site, I was actually greeted by a road runner, came walking right up basically to my feet, which was really weird. Um, but at any rate, that was interesting. And I mention it because there's lots of birds and wildlife here. So over 17 million years ago, there was some volcanic activity which actually created uh, this Chisos mountain range and it just encompasses uh, this basin. It's really, really spectacular to look at. And yeah, I like looking at all the different, uh, the birds and there's still some animals. I haven't seen too many animals, uh, but yeah, lots of birds and interesting plants in this uh, area because you can head just a little bit south of here or to the north and you're going to be in um, at a different elevation and a different climate altogether and one thing about this basin is nearby there's something called the window and so it's just to the south and basically it funnels uh, the water from the basin uh, out and into the Rio Grande River. And um, so you can view the window uh, a couple of ways. One, you can walk all the way down. It's two miles, one direction, 500 feet elevation change. So plan for that if you do that. So in other words, four miles round trip and 500 feet up and down elevation gain. But it's spectacular to go all the way down there. Uh, right now there's a drought, so uh, not a, not a lot of water flowing. Well, actually, there's no water flowing. And I walked all the way out to the edge, and I guess it's like a 200-foot uh, drop, or typically it'd be like a 200-foot waterfall there. And that's the window that I'm talking about. So at any rate, I did venture down there. It's a spectacular hike because you can look up at the different peaks as you go down, uh, you know, as you descend that 500 feet. And if you don't want to do that or you can't, there is an accessible trail up by the visitor center and it is truly accessible. I mean, there's a couple little bumps, ridges there, but it's like all sidewalk, right? And, and it takes you around and there's some um, interpretive signs and, and things there. It kind of explains the plants and the wildlife and there's, there's just great scenery to be had uh, just from even the visitor center, and I would highly recommend it, at the very least uh, taking the window view trail, and that's up, uh, you know, the window view trail is different 
than the window trail. And, um, and in fact, also a little caveat there, if you start the window trail from the campsite, then you're gonna cut out a lot of elevation change and whatnot that you might otherwise uh, starting from the other trailhead up above us. All right, so there's that. Now, there's more than just the Chisos Basin with Big Bend National Park. So when you enter the park, you wanna make sure and read through the information that they give you. You wanna hang on to this map, take it with you wherever you go, the paper map, very important. But yes, read through this, there's lots of stuff to see. There's all sorts of things. You can go hiking, of course. You can go for a scenic drive if hiking's not your thing. They have a scenic loop, they have uh, outlooks that you can uh, get views from. If your vehicle's capable, check in with the visitor center, with the rangers, and ask them about road conditions, because you can also take excursions out into the backcountry with your uh, capable SUV or truck. And uh, yeah, do camping overnight in the back country. Need a permit to do camping overnight. But I wanted to mention that. And yeah, awesome stargazing and bird watching even at the lower elevations. So you could, you know, here I'm at 5,200 feet. Well, you can drop down 3,000 feet down over by the Rio Grande River. Uh, so there's all sorts of things uh, to see and explore. It really is a very fascinating place. Speaking of visitor center, there's a couple of places that are worth mentioning um, that I spent a little bit of time at. So one is Rio Grande Village or Rio Grande Village, which is in the southeast corner of the park and also Panther Junction. Now, uh, Panther Junction is more centralized and you can get fuel there. And at the uh, fuel stop, you can also pick up snacks and things like that. There's a little, uh, like a C store there. And, but the other thing is at, at Panther Junction is they have a major visitor center with an interpretive uh, center there and also a post office. So that's good to know. And then back to the Rio Grande uh, village, um, that's where there is another, like an RV park. So you can actually even buy propane there. And um, if you head down that direction, there's uh, overlooks where you can actually look into uh, the neighboring town into Mexico, you know, and you can actually have, there's a, a place down there, I believe they call it uh, Boquillos. And so, yeah, you can, um, I think it's Boquillos del Carmen. And you can head on in there and visit Mexico if you uh, have your passport with you and everything. I'm, I'm looking, there's just another bird right here that I, I hadn't seen. Just two of them just went right by. Sorry about that. But yeah, so you can, you know, take a day trip down into Mexico. Also, there's, there's a, uh, a border crossing available down there. So there's a lot to see and do down there at, uh, at the Rio Grande village also. But the Rio Grande has uh, other things to offer down there, uh, including nature trails. You, I believe there's one where you can go out and go birding. I didn't, uh, I didn't do that. But um, as I mentioned, you know, check in at the visitor center and, and ask. Uh, the other thing that's down there they have, and throughout the park, uh, are ruins. And so you can uh, go out and explore these ruins. And I believe there's one that's maybe close to the major road is um, they, it's down at the Rio Grande and they call it uh, the Hot Springs. And I think there's even like an old post office that was down there, so it doesn't function anymore. It's, but it's, I think there's a ruin down there. I didn't go and check it out, but that's what I read. So uh, that one's a little bit closer in and, and maybe worth a look. What I'd like to do now is I like to share my campsite with you and just kind of give you a feel for what it's like, uh, you know, RVing here uh, 
in the Chisos uh, Basin. So let's go check out my GeoPro travel trailer. Let's see how I had it set up and, and how my 20 foot, actually it's 21 feet, uh, you know, from hitch to bumper, uh, 20 feet, four inches from hitch to bumper. But let's go check it out. Back behind me, that's where I'm camping. And this is my little uh, picnic area in here. And what's neat about this is uh, they do allow you to uh, do some grilling and they offer you the bench and the shaded canopy, but there's also a bear box. Yes, there are bear and mountain lions in the area. But what's really stupendous is just the views. But the reason why I'm mentioning this here is that it's a little bit of a hike to get from where you're allowed to place your vehicle and where you're going to be camping. So you might find that in a lot of uh, tent campsites where it's not a hike in, but you gotta move your gear, right? So pretty much I'm self-contained um, up here in this area, uh, straight up here. You can walk on down. But yeah, you can see it's kind of precarious and it was difficult to get this thing leveled out. So I don't uh, normally extend my tongue jack so much. So you can see here, I mean, that is a lot. So this is very precarious and maybe I can get a view coming up here. I mean, I don't know, it just, I don't know if the camera's necessarily picking it up, but um, that's crazy. So basically this is, it took 12 inches of extension from unhitching to get this thing totally level. And um, that's, that's a lot. So I'm here, like I said, I've, I've been here for over a week. Um, I haven't had any issues, but I don't know about kids climbing in and out. You know, uh, I, like I said, it's precarious. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want children climbing around it. That's for sure. And I don't, so I'm not doing any dancing or anything in there. And yeah, I just fit in just my little itty bitty uh, Chevy Colorado in here. So when they tell you that, um, you know, there's X number of feet, you know, there's 35 feet available or whatever. Uh, that's, they, they mean it. And same thing for bringing an RV. Let me try to get out of the sun here a little bit so it's not in the camera. When they say that, you know, don't bring anything longer than a 20 foot travel trailer down here, uh, they mean it. And so the drive uh, up and over the hill, it's, um, it's not crazy. The road is very well maintained and they have a really good fog line to follow. So it's not, um, it's not impossible. I wasn't worried about it, but I had to think about it. I used drive to climb up the hills and then I used low, in fact, low one to go downhill. And I used my little uh, hand brake for the trailer brake. So, uh, the reason why I mention all this is just, it's, if you're not thinking about it, you should be. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. So that's how I got up and over the hill. I got in here okay. Um, I just didn't want to, you know, say, hey, this place is great, and then have people come down here and then just have a terrible time. You do have to plan, uh, especially for this, for this place here. Had I had a longer wheelbase, a pickup truck, tow vehicle, it would have made things a lot more difficult. But yeah, I was basically not necessarily line to line, like fog line to center line, you know, but in a couple of turns, yeah, there's like some 10 mile per hour turns where, where yeah, you, you have to, uh, you gotta pay close attention. And slower is better in those, uh, you know, don't be scared to go five miles per hour because you're gonna, you're, you're off track your tracking will be uh, better. You'll be able to do a smaller or tighter radius, dropping it, dropping that speed down. The, the difference from 15 miles an hour to five miles per hour is huge when turning and pulling. Anyway, enough of me preaching. Now I can't remember exactly how many nights I booked. It wasn't a full like 14 nights, but uh, pretty darn close. And I've been here for over a week now and uh, 
things are winding down. I'm just so happy to have been here and so happy to have, uh, you know, shared this with you. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're happy also. Thanks for tuning in everyone. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.